Hey, and welcome to the second video on John Walton's six-part Lost World series. Walton is an Old Testament scholar specializing in ancient Near Eastern culture and is a primary professor of biblical exegesis at Wheaton College. Today's video will be on the lost world of Adam and Eve, Genesis 2 through 3, and the human origins debate. Let's get started. Walton informs us that Genesis is an ancient Near Eastern document, and he goes on to talk about high context versus low context communication. Genesis is high context because the author assumes that his audience shares his life, his culture, and his language. To help us understand this concept, Walton gives us the example of traffic alerts in Chicago. They're highly colloquial in their terminology of places and events and information, and so visitors wouldn't really understand it, but Chicago people would be completely familiar with everything it says. This type of communication assumes a lot of understanding between the author or the communicator and the audience. Walton says that we need to ask ourselves, are we deriving our theological principles from affirmations of the text, what God wants to say through the inspired writer, or through the accommodation of the text, the cultural assumptions that the writer holds in his worldview. We should be deriving our theological principles from the affirmations of the text. Both the word and the world, which we can explore scientifically, emanate from the powerful God of the universe. And ultimately, we need to be willing to consider if our interpretations, which are traditional or not traditional, conform to modern discoveries. Do they stand the test of examination? Walton continues on to restate and expand upon the conclusions he came to in his work on Genesis 1 and ancient cosmology. It's a difference between functional and material origin. It's kind of like a house versus a home. With a house, we might think of material composition like wood, but with a home, we could think about moving into that space and operating from within it. My last book review actually covered this topic in his book, so go and check it out. Walton then engages in a technical discussion about the use of Adam in Genesis, both with its definite article, Ha Adam, and without the definite article, Adam. The author of Genesis is trying to convey information about more than just one man. Walton thinks that Genesis 1.26 is talking about general humanity, Ha Adam. Adam is archetypal, and what's true of Adam is true of us all. Furthermore, Walton finds that Genesis 2 is sequential, not recursive. This means that the biblical author was trying to continue the story, not necessarily go back and expand on what he has already said. This is a huge proposal because it suggests that Adam can be differentiated from the Ha Adam of Genesis 1.26. Humans before Adam might seem a bit crazy, but does it sound interesting? If it does, check out this section of Walton's book. Walton then embarks on a lexical and contextual inquiry of biblical terms. The Hebrew word translated form is not necessarily material. Summer and winter are described as being formed, days and spirits, and even Israel as a nation. That doesn't sound too material. Dust refers to humanity's mortality contextually. People who are immortal don't need a tree of life. We sinned and therefore gave up our right to tree of life and being partners with God, reigning and ruling with Him. When we gave up our right to the tree of life, we gave in to the natural consequences of our natural mortality. The Hebrew word translated rib is actually better translated side. And when Adam is put in a deep sleep, that Hebrew word can actually mean in other places vision. So perhaps Adam saw a vision of Eve being taken from his side to show some kind of theological significance, not necessarily ontological significance. Walton sees that the New Testament 
talks about Adam and Eve as historical individuals, but also about archetypal and illustrative individuals concerning sin and mortality. This emphasis of sin and mortality, and not biological origins, is what Genesis, ancient Near Eastern texts, and a canonical examination all emphasize. The author of Genesis describes Adam being placed in the Garden of Eden in sacred space, and the verbs that are used in connection with his vocation are verbs other places use in the Bible in connection with priestly service. The mistake of Adam serving as priest was to let in the snake, not discerning the snake to be a character of chaos and non-order. And because he did not discern this and fell into pride, evil is a result and we are still waiting for the world to find its complete order and perfection in God's presence, rule and rest, permitting all things. Like with his book on Genesis 1, scholars have critiqued this book quite a bit. One of the critiques that they give is that a book of Acts describes Paul as saying, from one man, all nations proceeded forth. Walton thinks, however, that this claim is more organizational rather than biological, and he thinks Paul is alluding to Genesis chapter 10, and that Noah, not Adam, is that one man. Others are concerned that Walton's view degrades the image of God and humanity, but Walton assures us his view does not do that and goes on to describe how the image of God is corporate and functional, about subduing and ruling. It concerns identity, naming, and spiritual creation, and also a substitutional role, acting on God's behalf, as well as how we relate to God. Scholars are also concerned that his method of comparing Genesis with other ancient Near Eastern documents is a bit out of order. Do the two really compare as much as Walton suggests that they do? Also, there is really no reason, they say, that material origins cannot be a part of the functional origins described in the creation of humanity. Others find his treatment of genealogies in which Adam appears to be unconvincing. They claim that they are supposed to depict contextually an unbroken, literal, historical, genealogical sequence. And others find that the theological possibility of sin and death before Adam is kind of scary. Whatever your views are, and they are important, about the human origins debate, Walton urges you to enter into this discussion for a couple of important reasons. It is important to dialogue with science professionals to show how there is compatibility and convergence between the Bible and science. It's also important for evangelism because many set up a false science and Bible dichotomy that keeps interested onlookers away. And finally, in order to faithfully engage the future generation, we need to respond to pressing questions discussed in this book. We can interpret scripture in a way that opens up new doors of understanding. Continue on in your quest for truth. Pick up Walton's book and continue to follow these relevant topics by tuning in to next week's presentation on Walton's book, Lost World of the Flood, Mythology, Theology, and the Deluge Debate.